overzealous there. You know I got your number, number all night. I'm always on your team, I got your back, all right. Taking on, taking those losses if you treat. Cow updates. We have a little bit more mucus. There we go. We have a little bit more of the show. Go little rock star. Ding, ding. So like, it's kind of hard because when you're a farmer, you kind of just know when someone's carving and then when someone says, how do you know? You go, mm, I can't really tell you. I'll try to vocalize what I'm thinking. Um, she's looking really agitated. Her ears are back and her eyes are really like, she's looking like that. She's going, oh. Yeah, look, her ears are slightly back. That means she's in, thinking about something. She's in pain. She, her eyes are quite bright. She's concentrating. She's not chewing a cud. She keeps looking behind her swishing her tail like mad and obviously the obvious show of um like mucus there's no milk dripping that's also like a telltale sign when the cows start dripping colostrum um but yeah i'll try and take you along with me and hopefully i do catch a carving because she could just like spit one out and i wouldn't even know so this is a low loaded tailor that we bought to move the bobcat around So this trailer basically lifts up and down and you can see the wheels aren't even on the floor and it just enables you to drive things like the Bobcat straight on. Always use a strap on, guys. Always use a strap on. It's got its own mini ecosystem. Look at this. This was meant to be my video. So, Roy has just taken the wheels off the bobcat. Look at all this behind. This is why we're taking it off. And actually, we make a conscious effort not to drive over. I do find it quite interesting that the bobcat it has little places where to lift it up so we've just shoved the s250 beast under the s160 beast beastie beastie beast at all the rigid and it makes them really useful but it also makes them slightly scary to drive 
drive at times. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick walk around of our two Bobcats because it is never that they are parked together. So you may or may not know we farm across two spots. We farm at Roy's dad's house where the S160 lives and then we farm at our house here and that is where the 250 lives. So these are in essence the same machine. They are a skid steer, a Bobcat. Wow, pressure washing, hey? I prefer this one, Roy prefers this one. This one is a lot smaller. I'll show you from the side. Don't know if you can quite see how much smaller it is. Um, from the back, maybe. No, from the back, they look pretty much the same size. The main difference in these is the power and the different lifts that you can see on the arms. I'll show you in a second. So that is them packed right next to each other and together. What are you eating? Oh, that's pleasant. That is, take it away, take it away, dirty. Blech. So you can see stood here, the size difference. It might not seem like a lot, but actually, this one reaches the top of the silage pit and this one wouldn't be able to hold or grab a silage, it would fall over. So um, the weight distribution's different. Um, this one's a lot heavier. It, it is a lot bigger of a machine. So I'll, I'll put the arms up and I'll show you the difference in the way that it lifts. He totally thought he was going to win, you know. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Okay, so um, I just came inside to do um, a little bit of um, number kind of research for the Bobcats because it's not something I would know off the top of my head and it's not something that I am particularly interested in either. But I can tell you that the S168 lifts 1,600 pounds and the S250 lifts 2,500 pounds, hence the numbers on the side of them. I knew that. Um, different things, uh, the S250 is 75 horsepower and the S160 is 56 horsepower. Um, it's more about what it can lift though, to be honest, um, with a Bobcat. It's not so much about the speed of it or anything like that. It's more like how powerful it is um, and not necessarily translated into how fast it goes. So we've just seen how this lady is getting on. Hello, big lad. Oh, 
Oh, you good girl. <laughs> Oh, hang on, look at his little face. <laughs> well done, you. To dip the navels, we use a titty cup. So this is like, it's a Delavelle one. You can get it, um, they're for dipping cow's teats in a milking parlor. And what happens is when you squeeze it, the, li the cup fills up with um, liquid and then you just dip the navel in it and give it a squeeze. And um, that way it covers it completely. If you use a spray bottle, which we used to do, um, you, you end up not getting all of it, whereas if you completely submerge it, I do think it um, it does get it a little bit better for you. But yeah, super proud. This is good. This is good. That is a strong calf. You can see it is looking for the tit. Literally walking around, you can tell. He's running around the cow, sniffing, nosing. That means he wants a drink. I'll go and get him some straw. Um, and bed them up in here. I Good result. Brilliant result. Good. This is great. I'm just gutted I missed it for you. I, it would have been kind of cool. Oh, baby bird. Just leave this here because I'll be dipping him again later. Stick it up there. Um, just to dry that umbilical out. <laughs> if you knew what a sh rubbish time carving we'd had um latterly you would know that that is an a1 result like oh the relief to have a calf that's bright and bubbly and all right it's just yeah it's good it's really good it's what it should be that's what it should be we shouldn't be worrying that it's going to drop dead when it comes out even if it is like literally christmas when she's having it <laughs> right s250 beast needs a wash iodine hands The turning circle on the big one is absolutely massive, to be honest. Compared to the little one and the way we use them, um, it just means we can get into little sheds and things, which is actually more handy than having a lot of power. Sheds here at home are a lot bigger. Um, they're all new and they're all purpose built where the sheds at Crackenthorpe, um, they are slightly smaller. There's like the lean-to that you need to be able to whiz around in. Um, so the little one is really handy and that's why Roy likes it so much because it can get places that other things can't. So that big um, S250 replaced um, a Massey um, scraper tractor and we use it to scrape the cows, um, to distribute silage into the Keenan. So it needed that extra height. Um, so yeah. They're both decent in their own rights, but they've both got different purposes for us. Um, and we farm over two spots. It might seem a bit excessive, but meh. Yeah. How did you know whether they were powerful or not? What did you say? If you went and ran into a thing like a mug midden, if you could lift it up and it didn't lift the back end up. gonna go and dip baby calf's um, navel again just to keep that like any kind of infection away or dirty bacteria It once helped me when um, our vet, one of them, Sophie, um, said to me, she explained why you dip navels um, 
And she said, when a calf's born, they're born, born with um, little to no immune system. And what happens is it's like a race between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria to get inside the calf to the belly. And so what happens is um, if the navel's open and it hasn't got any um, like help of closing up or anything to stop any bacteria, it'll enter through the navel and it'll get there before the good bacteria does, which is the colostrum from the milk. She said, it's so, it, obviously it's a lot more complicated than that, but it's like a race um, between the good and the bad. And that's how always the way that I've kind of, it's helped me understand why it's so essential to get them um, dipped as soon as possible, get the navel dried out and keep them so clean. It also um, explained why getting colostrum into them as soon as possible, literally as soon as possible and as much as possible, good quality um, to aid the good bacteria to get there first. So it might not be, you know, perfectly scientifically correct, but that's the way that it helps me understand why it's so important that we do these things. So yeah, double dipper. Obviously always be quick. <laughs> Always be careful because she could literally just turn around and kill you, especially right now. Uh. <laughs> Hi, Bambi. <laughs> you are so cute. <laughs> like, really so cute. Inky, you'll get me kicked. So, um,. <laughs> I don't think this calf's had a drink yet off its mum, so I'm just gonna uh, give it a little bit of feed and see if I can put the calf on. If this is the last you see of me, it's been fun. Yeah. Fit through. Oh, he's on. Oh, he's on. Oh, he's on. Nothing better than that. Nothing better. Yeah, worth it, isn't it? Oh. Oh. I just cover these mag gaps up with a hurdle and the calf doesn't walk out and get lost in the night. The main reason for bringing the bobcat back here wasn't to take pictures of it and race away down the ad. It was um, to give it a good wash off and then to grease it. So um, I'm just charging up the battery um, for the grease gun. I've got a new thing of grease there and then tomorrow morning uh, we'll get it greased up and it can get back to Cracky and continue work there. If you don't grease that bobcat, I can tell you from experience, every time you lift the arms up it goes We don't want that. That's not good. If you made it back to the end of this video, 